All right, welcome back to our review of the black cars in M15. I am super stoked. Uh, even though I forgot to hit record the first time, we'll know exactly what we're going to say for each card up until the middle of this black set. So let's start it <laughs> out with uh, Liliana Vess. Uh, five mana planeswalker, five devotion. We've seen her before. Um, the plus one discards a card. The minus two finds you a card but doesn't draw it quite yet, but you get to search your library for it. And the minus eight just brings all the creatures back to be on your side. So um, what do you think, Kevin? Uh, again, this is a card that is more of a commander card, and each set is going to... I think they really need to reprint this card because the price of this card is becoming a little bit steep. It has been consistently been going up for the past couple of years now, so commander needs another reprint for this. I don't think it's standard playable. The plus one discard a card is a little too late if, well, on the fifth turn. A lot, of time, a lot of decks will already be out of card into top deck mode, or it, it's just not be, uh, you know, good enough by that point. The tutoring where it's putting on top of the of of the library, again, good in commander, not not as good in standard. So, great card in more casual competitive. I don't think it'll see much play. Absolutely. And uh, the first time we recorded this, I uh, made the point that your minus two, you can draw that card right away with Underworld Connections. So, if you put it in your mono black list that's a thing that you can consider doing but i'm not sure yeah. that this planeswalker in particular makes it into that deck in the main board or the sideboard so we'll see how it pans out um the soul of innistrad is a, a pretty interesting one uh the six six for six is pretty sweet i find death touch a little bit underwhelming on a creature so big um and then the ability to return three target creature cards from the graveyard to your hand is pretty sick in the slower formats like uh, sealed and uh, draft. So uh, I think I think it's got some pretty sweet applications in limited, and I, I think you have something to say about uh, constructive for this yeah, card. Too. I like it in the dredge deck, um, uh, the black green dredge deck. I think this actually fits maybe a one or a one over two of because it's free. Now you're going to be dredging it. You're going to be throwing it in the graveyard with the Seder Wayfinders or the Grizzly Salvages or whatnot. And then you have that potential. Some of the, the games with, with, with the, the Black Green Dredge de deck were grindy. You're grinding out your opponent. And so Soul of Innistrad is the perfect card to actually give you some more fodder, um, yeah. with, with especially if you accidentally mill a card that you actually wanted to play. So Yeah, this is an interesting one. Do you think this is like a, a one-of in the Dredge deck to just get value out of it? Like one or squeeze two of. Yeah. I mean, it's great to get back Shadowborn Demons. Yep, I can see that. It also kind of nabo Shadowborn if you don't have the required uh, required number of creatures in the graveyard. But I mean, that's something you get to choose to play around yourself. So, yeah. so that's pretty interesting. Um, Bloodhost, a disappointing sack outlet with a disappointing effect, and uh, yeah, I don't, I don't know. Yeah, we we womp, womp. yeah, you were counting on getting a really good sack outlet for a few I of was. your of your rogue brews. And I, I, I don't think one. this is going to uh, this is not going to suffice as a sacrifice uh, for that deck. So nope, casting cost is too high. Activation is too high yep. for um, a relatively weak ability. Absolutely, and I think it's fair to say that that ability could have been uh, just sacrifice and not mana yep. involved in it. Or two damage, two target opponent loses two life and you gain two life would have been a lot better than just putting a counter on it. Yep. This guy needed flying or something. It needed something to make it special. That's right. Uh, other than the him failing to put all of the blood into the table with his second yep. victim there, uh, that's just that's just sloppy vampire work right there. And I'm I'm not all about vampires that are not sloppy. You need very prudent vampires in my. Oh, opinion. look how classy he is! I mean, he took the time to dress all classy. Well, he did dress up nice, but maybe he should have like <laughs> spent that time reading his vampire manual, yeah. um, and just you know really learning how to sacrifice people properly. I think that that's the reason why it costs so much is because you have to get someone else to like finish the sacrifice every time. Um, carry on crow zombie bird. Boom. Uh, awesome. That, that's enough for you. Even though it enters the battlefield tapped. Um, I'm not sure how a, a bird can show up so slowly, but I respect, I respect it. So <clears throat> eternal thirst is one that is, I think good enough to be in your deck but isn't quite good enough to be a high pick. Yeah, I agree there. Lifelink is traditionally pretty good. Mark of the Vampires is better, though, because you do get the plus two, plus two automatically. You don't yeah. have to count on something. 
Other than this, whenever a creature an opponent control does die, it gets a plus one plus one counter. So it's 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 a good little ability. Again, it, it's not a high pick though. You have to have means. three creatures die for it to be better. I yeah. mean, it costs half as much, so that's the thing yeah, too. Yeah, but again, it's it's something you're not going to be casting on turn two. Exactly. Um, so that's good. Uh, love the art. It led me to believe that it was more like Gift of Orjova than it is. Um, just the the big wings. It looks like it should have flying and lifelink, but I mean, we can't have everything we want. So yeah. Uh, let's just move on to oh, Gift of Orjova's there at the bottom as a compared card. Wicked. Um, <laughs> Feast of the Fallen. Even though it's uncommon, I think you just have too many hoops to jump through before you get the actual value out of it. Yeah, you don't get enough out of this. Your opponent has to lose life. You have to have a relevant creature to put the counter on, and it's just it's just meh. Yeah, that's, I, that's even a commander. I still think this is meh. You can you can I mean, oh, maybe there's a card that exploits plus one plus one counters, but still. I think you can do way better than that. They're yeah. putting a counter on a creature. Uh, Necrobite, yeah. <clears throat> frequently a one for one. Um, even just saving your creature from removal, it's such a versatile card, and that's Very the, good that's the reason why it costs so much, right? So you're you're it's destroying the creature too. and saving it. is not not bad at all. Absolutely. So this I mean, can swing games completely yeah. in your favor. Hundred percent. And uh, this is from Innistrad Block Two, I believe. I'm not sure if it was printed before that. But anytime I see a card that was printed from Innistrad block later, it's just it just screams, check this card out because it has to be full of value. Like that whole set is ridiculous. Yeah. That was a great set. So uh Necrogen Scudder, I respect because it looks like it's like from uh, Starship Troopers or StarCraft or something. It's like a brood lord. Um but yeah, it uh it's a three three for three flying, which is crazy good, and then the downside is you lose three life one time, which is you know, just fine too. Yep, Suicide Black loves it. Yep, definitely. Unmake the Graves. You're getting two cards back from your graveyard. It's got Convoke. It's instant speed, which is kind of the thing that sets it apart from other effects that are similar in recent sets. Um, do you think the instant speed pushes it over the top as far as playability, or do you think it's just kind of no, one of those? No, this eh. is just a filler card, 21, 22, 23. Yeah. Uh, again, these it's two. It, you're getting two for one. You're, you're casting a card that's going to get you two cards back, yep. so it's kind of like Black's Divination. Okay. But Black's it's, Divination. there's nothing special about the card. Yeah, it'll get you your bombs back. That's the important part. Yep. Wall of Limbs is, I, I think, another card that's kind of like a mid-pick, just because it, it does protect you, but it gives you endgame reach as well. Yep. Which is a, a pretty is, interesting feature in a wall, I think. This is the type of card that I, I enjoy. Um... We were talking last before we forgot we were recording that, <laughs> that I I loved M14 because of just the the versatility that you could make some pretty pretty cool decks with the Angel Concord and Bubbling Cauldron and Barrage Expendables and Young Young Pyramids or all these cards that you could that synergize well yep. that ne weren't necessarily good in and of themselves but were so good when you could get these wacky combos off. So Wall of Limbs feels very much like. A lot of those cards in M14 that you could actually build around it and have this be your finisher. 100%. Yeah, M14 was a total Johnny corset. I loved the, I loved it so much, so much. Uh, Necromancer Stockpile is one that's, I think, printed more for like a modern type of deck. You've got um, two mana for an enchantment, and then two mana discard a creature card, draw a card. If the discarded card was a zombie card, put a zombie onto the battlefield tapped. So you've got things like uh, Gravecrawler, which you can just recast from the graveyard anyway, so you don't care if you're discarding it, drawing a card, and getting a zombie that's actually better than Gravecrawler anyway on the battlefield. Um, do you think this card is going somewhere? I, I really like it for modern, as, again, there's a lot of things you can do with it, like Bloodgast, even though Bloodgast isn't a zombie. Mm -hmm. You can actually put it in your graveyard and get a card. And then uh, it's I think it's good. In, there's a lot of zombies in standard that either get value out of the graveyard or, or kind of want to be in the graveyard. Um, Drag Mangler, I mean, a lot of them are rotating is the problem, yep. but uh, the next set is, is probably going to have some zombies as well. And now that I thought about this, we I know that uh, Mark uh, Marrow has already said that they're bringing back an old school ability that people liked. Could Ooh. be Madness. Who hey. knows? This could be Madness. Okay. And this card would be nuts with Madness. So was it Sarkhan, Sarkhan the Mad anyway? Yeah, yeah. It, it, 
I don't think it's madness personally, but Necrom- Necromancer Stockpile just screams abuse me with madness with cards like the Basking Root Walla. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And whatnot. So it's it's this card is just value. I, I like it a lot. You get you get to discard you know creature cards you don't want to draw a card and again if this goes in kind of a dredge type strategy or an immortal servitude type strategy where I mean th- you're getting a card no matter what and if it's a zombie you get a, bla- a 2-2 black zombie creature yeah uh, is Time at the Murder Kings a zombie right uh, yes he is he recur. I so it's so. a great little synergy between ne- Necromancer's stockpile and, and yep. Time Merit. Absolutely. I'm sure is Black Hat did they reprint Black Hat uh, yeah, they or did. was it they're yeah, I think, it, oh, there he is, right there. I thought they Black were putting it in this set, yeah. That, um, again, with like a moral servitude, then you can get him back. Yep. So, I'm thinking, I'm thinking this this will have a lot of synergies. It's it's one of those cards I like because it takes work. It just doesn't. The deck just doesn't build itself. You're gonna yep. have to work to actually find a, a good home for it. Totally. Um. So pre pre second recording, stain the mind was a card that I wasn't really sold on. And then Kevin put in a lot of work that I wish you could see on, on selling it to me for the current standard. So my opinion was that Slaughter Games, which is a very similar card to this, um, is just a better card. And I, th- I think if you look at them in a vacuum, that it's pretty clear that Slaughter Games just is a better card. It's stronger, costs less, and it can't be countered. Um, but that said, uh, in the current standard with Mono Black, not particularly wanting to play red, for anything other than slaughter games, really, uh, this is a, a pretty viable card against in the sideboard against the control decks. Yep, and it's got its best friend Thoughtseize, so you can actually set it up. Thoughtseize gets to look at their hand and know what you want to get with Stain the Mind. So again, it's great at breaking up like an Elspeth. So you take an early with Thoughtseize, you just take like a Dissolve or anything early that they would be playing and then just count on Stain, Stain the Mind to actually get rid of another card out of their hand yep. and then all copies of that. So, and against combo decks, you can get rid of their win condition. These have traditionally seen play in sideboard every time they have been um, legal in the standard. I think that Wizards has been consistently printing one of these per standard. Yeah, uh, I think it's yeah pretty decent and having Convoke is interesting too, so... Um, it's a uh, it's a shame that this isn't like an instant speed spell. I think this would be really interesting as a an instant speed convoke, but that might just be too strong. Yeah, they've they've moved away from discard being instant speed yeah. just because then you can really lock people out. Uh, untap, upkeep, draw step, instant speed it. Yep. Uh, wicked. So leeching sliver. Uh, I think we went over and it was um, very good in your sliver deck. Quite poor in M fifteen. As yeah. far as slivers go, like you, you know, uh, this this actually isn't even a bad card in and of itself for limited. Well, I don't know because it's it's going to be automatically you know losing life. It's going to be you got to think of this as a two one. Yep. A little bit more valuable than a two one because even if it's blocked, you're still doing one damage. But uh, this is an absolute bomb in a sliver deck. Yep. I, I'm not suggesting slivers will be a a decent deck in standard. I don't think they get enough love. From this set to really push them over the top in a in a uh, very hostile environment to little creatures like Bile Blight, Drown in Sorrow, Anger of the Gods, Supreme Verdict. They really um, hurt those type of decks. So I don't think Sliver is going to go anywhere. But this is a great card for the Eternal Sliver decks, the Casual Sliver decks, the Commander Sliver decks, and from a market standpoint, this is a great spec to pick up like foil copies. Absolutely, yeah. Taking up your full, full copies of your leeching sliver is very important. Okay, so now now we're back to where we were. Yeah. Only 14 minutes ago. So we caught up pretty darn quick. Fester Gloom, sorcery, non bad creatures get minus one, minus one to the end of turn. Uh, I'll let you handle this one. I'm not sure how to value uh, this one. It's pretty cool, non black. Uh, we've seen Shrevels before. Um, Would have been nice if this was an instant speed. Yeah, I think that's what Bring breaks that, it for me. But you got to look at again. It, it's about looking at the format, and there's a lot of one toughness stuff. There yep. is a ton, especially white with the three one flyer, the for three mana and the three one ground for for two mana. Yep. And just a, a ton of stuff that this this is a great sideboard card if nothing else. I mean, I, I I'm a lot different from a lot of limited players. I actually tend to value if I'm in a color to value sideboard cards higher than I 
I than other players might. Uh, e- example being, I, I take a lot. A card that I take a lot is the uh, Gainsay Dark Betrayal and the Exile Tiger White Permanent, whatever that one is. Glare of Heresy. Yeah. Heresy in in uh, the Theros. As I know that you know, I have basically a one in three chance, or even a one in two chance, a lot of times to go up against a person that's going to be using that color. So it's something it can bring in that is just a bomb against them. Yeah. So. I think I think Fester Gloom is perfect for if you if you look at it in that mentality. It's gonna be in your sideboard. You're not gonna be mainboarding this. Yep. But it's it's gonna just completely shut down certain decks. Absolutely. Do you ever have you ever glare of Heresied a Elspeth in a limited format? No. Because it feels you, do you know, really I've not really good. faced uh Elspeth that often in in limited. Thankfully a lot of my decks that I, I play uh are pretty quick. In limited, I, I tend to either go wacky combo or hyper aggressive in yep. in a. So I try to just race it if that's the the case. <laughs> I've never even drafted an else, but that's sad. I've done so many Theros drafts. Yeah. Oh, okay. Ulcerate is a card that I absolutely love. So one black target creature gets minus minus or minus three minus three, and you lose three life. Is this going to be a card that you see being played in modern? Mm, with this member, no. Dismember is just superior to it. Dismember is just better. That's that's minus five, minus five. Can you pay for the whole and thing four. with life? And four life. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, it's more efficient, and it's just a colorless after that, right? Yeah, and it and it hits very specific targets that you want dismember to hit. Mm-hmm. Uh, mainly deceiver X arc. This does not hit deceiver X arc. Okay. What about in um, standard? Just oh, center! This is a great card. It's an awesome card. Wicked. With with the amount of removal there is right now, though, it's wow. I mean, standard, mono black. Ugh. Oh, it they have so more removal than they can creature. use. They literally, there's like cards that are like, this is pretty good removal. It's a shame that all of this removal is better, and I can't hold this anymore. Yeah. So it's yeah, it's pretty packed. Uh, as far as a very low cost option that gets rid of, I don't know, knife Elf specters and things. It doesn't hit Brimas, which is huge, but. I think it's worth watching to see if someone picks it up and and gets successful with it. It looks yeah, like the kind I, of card that could play. be powerful. In in some point in time, it will see play. Again, it doesn't hit, hit Corsair Crucifix either. Yeah, so those are both which is a very, major very upsetting card. parts. Uh, let's see, endless obedience. Um, put target creature card from a graveyard on the battlefield under your control. Convoke for six. Pretty um, vanilla here. We have to- so many reanimation. Yeah. Uh, I think but, there's better re- reanimations. This one it potentially could be very cheap. I'm sure someone will figure out how to abuse this. Yeah, I would prefer it be blind obedience. So I guess I prefer blind obedience to endless obedience. Yeah. I'd rather I'd rather you be blindly devoted to me for a week than completely devoted to me for like forever. Um. Zathrid Skyblade. Oh, I remember this. So this one looks really cool. The the two one hexproof for three that sometimes gets first strike and death touch. Yep, it has the ability to. I think this is a a board wrecking ability. This this just makes the board state so complicated for your opponent that sometimes they just won't even consider attacking. They'll just not. Yep. I mean, it's a fine card. Don't know if it's quite standard playable. A lot of people, this had a lot of hype surrounding it when it was first spoiled. But, I mean, to activate its four mana. I uh, don't... Hexproof something is kind of new for black. Black, a lot of times, doesn't get hexproof cards. Yeah. Um, in fact, I don't... this might be, I can't think of any other hexproof cards out of black. Um, you need a shroud, but. Yeah, I'm not sure. But I, I don't see this seeing any kind of constructed play ever. Yeah. I, I just think that it's. A really solid card for limited. It's oh yeah! Solid. Oh yeah! It's a great card. So what else is there? Which is familiar? Two, three for three, whatever. Black Cat is a card I know you're pretty excited about. Well, it's just a. I've, I've liked it in the past, but you need to go sack outlet for it, which they didn't. I mean, I've got Timerit though. I think that this is exactly what I want in a black red Immortal Servitude deck. I needed a card that got value by putting it into the graveyard. Um, I, typically, I mean, there's two routes you can go with Immortal Servitude. You can either dredge yep. yourself a lot or, or mill, whatever you want to call the term. 
uh, mill yourself a lot of creatures to get value. But the, the problem with that is you can uh, inadvertently mill your Immortal Servitude. What made Bug Immortal Servitude so good, and this card actually was in Bug Immortal Servitude, uh, is that you got value out of it, and then you got to reanimate it. Yeah. So I, I'd like more of those cards. Unfortunately, I, don't, I still don't think there's enough to really make Immortal Servitude viable, but this is definitely one in the right direction. Yep, absolutely. Uh, Nightfire Giant is another It's another in the set of color off color. So this one is 4-3 uh, for 5 in black, which is okay. Um, and it gets plus 1, plus 1 as long as you control a mountain. And then a 5-4 is just huge for black. And then uh, with the ability to shock a creature or player for five, which Great is limited. pretty strong and limited. So yep. I could see it. I would play this for sure. I yep. probably wouldn't play it if I wasn't playing red. Yeah, it's going to be a second or third pack uh, higher pick. First pack is going to be very, very, very low pick. Yeah. Unless you just got, you know, gifted a bomb black, then a bomb red card, then, you know, this card. Yeah. Then you would take it. Then you're left. But. Yeah, third third pack is gonna be very highly picked if you're into the colors. So yeah, for sure. Uh, Ob Nix oh, Nixless Ob Nixless Unshackled. This is an interesting guy. Um, oh wow, this has caused so much. Four four for pride. six, flying trample. Whenever an opponent searches his or her library, that player sacrifices a creature and loses ten life. When another creature dies, put a plus one plus one counter on him. So <laughs> this is this is a commander hate card if I've ever seen one. Yep. Um, is this seeing playing anything else? Like, if if you if you removed the fact that it's a four four flying trample, and just made it cost one or two mana and made it a one one, would you play it in modern? Oh yeah, absolutely. Well, it'd be in the sideboard for sure. But it's too late for modern. It's six mana. Good luck getting it out yep. against so many decks that are gonna just either control you by turn six. Or you're just playing dead, either by aggro combo, turn six, good luck. Yep. So I think they had an opportunity to make a modern card here, but it just it they on purpose obviously made a six mana seat that you couldn't ruin everyone's day with fetch lands. Yeah, you couldn't make all the pod players <laughs> and the pod players weep. Rage quit. So. Also. Oh, this is a huge bummy cost. Nine mana for destroy all creatures you don't control, destroy all planeswalkers you don't control. Commander. Commander, commander, commander. And oh, we, this is a really good commander. Is this what? It, okay, this must be the promo for going to pre-release. Something, um, something like is that. it? It might be. I think it. It's just a like. I haven't seen these before. They released one with Journey to Next. They just gave us. I. I again, I'm a part of a, a game store, a local game store, and they gave us a bunch of Hall of Triumphs and just said, "Give them out at your discretion." And this might be. One of, those. one of those yeah i know in um events they give you like everyone gets a different art of a card and then like the top few players get a foil version of something yeah that's usually yeah that's usually in that's like, like, like game, game day game day yeah but they, i mean wizards has been sending us a lot of just freebies to give out yeah they've been wizards hooks up its local game stores yeah um, one so, thing that I'm disappointed with with the, with the pre-releases is they have been, you know, how many how many times now have we had this player pre-release card and they give us kind of garbage pre-releases? I wish they do go back to the good old days of bomb pre-release cards like Worm Coil Engine that you didn't get to play with, but um, at least it gave some incentive to. And then you weren't pigeonholed into a color like we're going to be coming up to the black. Uh, pre-release card and it's in my opinion it, there's no question about going no. another color besides black it's so far and away the most ridiculous card plus you get to play stab wound He's so good <laughs> <laughs> stab wound is insane as a removal for things that have two toughness and even more insane for things that are like a three three Poor blue. You All just won three cards. Oh we just, yeah, you just completely take a creature out of the <laughs> game and force them to get shocked every single turn for having it. Like that's absolutely brutal. Uh, my first return to Ravnica sealed. I actually lost to a stab wound. The stab, uh, and it was a ten turn stab wound. The <laughs> stab wound, my trestle throw. <laughs> oh or no. Trestle throw. Yeah. So that's just a huge card. I don't know. It's like I would first pick it in a pack probably. If the rare was awful, I would take this card over. Yeah, I've, I've first picked. Was this Stabun a common in the? 
other did set, they, though. Did they upgrade it from Return to Ravnica? I'm not sure. That's something I'd have yeah, to I look think, up. I think Return to Ravnica was a common. I might be mistaken. No, I'm pretty sure it was a common. Huh. Uh, let me just look that up quick because I'm actually interested. And I think people might you know, be rolling their eyes because they know oh, already. God. But Your stab wound was a common. Was it? It's just so no. strong. I'm yeah. Oh yeah, it was a common. Damn, it's just so good. And oh, you know, they, just they just reprinted this in a uh, conspiracy too. Jeez. Did they put it in a conspiracy? Well, it's showing up with conspiracy. Maybe not. It's, oh. I'm on MTG, uh, Magic Online, and it's showing that kind of. It's like a weird oh, okay. symbol. I don't know. Maybe not. Uh, you know what else is good? Both Child of Might or Child of Night and a Cursed Spirit. Both yep, they're staples in the past. They've both been very, very um, good to the black kind of strategy. Yep. Doing those those swingy life. Like these two cards are very synergistic together because you're putting a two one that's hopefully going to trade, but if not, it's going to chump block for one turn and gain you life. Yep. And hopefully give you an a, an extra couple turns to to attacking with their cursed spirit. Absolutely. Again, it's called suicide black. You're trying to do more damage to uh, them. And really not being on the defense on on your end. Yep. So, uh, caustic tar I think is a uh, uncommon that I would not play. Yeah, it's actually not too bad. It's just it, you got to think of this as seven mana if you want to activate it on the first turn, though. It is. It is. And also, you know that it's a little bit sketchy to play because there are elk dying in it. And I know how wizards feels about elk. Yeah, and they, they love them. So if they're treating them poorly, the card might not be the best. Um, Grave Digger is a card that I've only really played on Duels of the Planeswalker, so it's tough to judge. But it, it's nothing to it's value on that. So getting a creature card back from your graveyard to your hand with a body, pretty good. Pretty yep, good. And in the in the past couple uh, formats, they've put stipulations on these type of cards like only a zombie card or only yep. so I'm glad to see a, an absolute return any creature card yep this will get your you demon know, or great, dragon it's back. a solid card I don't think it's a high pick I usually pick these later yep definitely um, goes great with the next card typhoid rats oh, yeah, yes it does go great with the next card typhoid rats pairs perfectly with the grave digger love 1-1 one, one death touchers yep. they are very very underrated and limited our shade is a little bit weaker than normal. The Zoff shade. Yep. Uh, but that yep. said, it's still a mana sink, and you're going to want those late games. So if you need yeah, to slam a, a shade it's in. It's a filler card, in my opinion. It's, it's again, in 20, 21, 22. Yep. If you don't have anything better. 100%. Uh, Crippling Blight is a great card. I absolutely love Crippling Blight. It's, um, that was actually played in aggro decks pre-rotation, too. Um, just as a way to yep. get you guys through. So... And it's an enchantment, which is relevant to maybe the um, one of the enchantment-based decks, the the Sylvan decks. It's it's relevant towards some of the aggro mono black aggro decks that did curve out at Green Merchant, yep. as it does add a black devotion as well. I mean, it, it, those those little things actually matter. Yep. In the end, it has a black devotion, and if you're playing something like uh, Agent of the Fates, you can target your own creature and get. A heroic activation yeah. off of it and then having your creature not able to block in a black aggro deck isn't such a huge deal um i don't think i don't know if it's something as good as like ring flesh in that instance but you know it, it's a little bit more flexible in that way yep i've had to uh freak is cure my own tormented hero do the last one damage to opponent before doesn't that feel True so start. good though it feels so yep. good to win that way um yep. mind rot is mind rot but yep. Sign in Blood is awesome. I've actually picked this in my... I, I'm going to do a video series for the, the, my top five influential cards yep. from the M M15, and this is actually on that list, even though it's just a common, and even though we already have a card called Read the Bones, yep. I do think that Sign in Blood and Read the Bones are not comparable. They, they, they go in two different decks. They do. This one goes in an aggro deck. That one goes in more of a um, mid-range or control type deck. 100%. I, I know that black-white mid-range absolutely loved Read the Bones at one point. They yeah. preferred it over uh, the Underworld Connections because they weren't caring about Devotion. And it was just a one-time, you know, fix their hand, try to dig for the Blood Baron or dig for the Opsodot. Yep. But Silent Blood is just the 
perfect card in mono black aggro. As there have been so many times that I've ran this in the past as a finisher. It's if if your opponent is down to two life, you can actually just kill them off. Yep. Here, ha have two cards. Sign right here. Yeah, I've I've definitely done both of these. I think a lot of people have. It's just you draw two cards or you just kill them with the cards. So it's super solid. Um I actually play this in a modern deck. Really? Interesting. Oh, yep. Cool. Mono Black Infect plays it. It's a way to actually oh, keep above yeah. the card advantage. Yeah, I could see that. Um, it's actually it's actually a discard. It's more like 8 rack, but you're using Ink Moth Nexus as your win condition instead of uh, rack or the Shrieking Affliction. So. Okay, cool. So A lot more budget friendly, too. So here's the card that's going to break the pre-release. Indulgent yep. Tormentor. See, I say I'm going to go black, but since I am technically an employee, I'm going to get last pick, so I'm probably going to have to go blue because yeah. all these will be sold out. Yes. So a 5-3 <laughs> for 5 flying guy that you get for sure in your deck as long as the other six packs, or five packs, I guess. No, that would be six packs. Um, support it. and oh, I will splash this. To. I don't care what. Oh, yeah. I will splash this card. You're going to play this guy, and he actually looks even cooler in the promo picture, so, I mean, there's no reason not to play him. Obviously, he draws you a card or kills one of their creatures or makes them lose life. So, sometimes it's an 8-3. Sometimes it draws you a card, and sometimes it just kills a dude. It's just so uncomparable to the rest of them that it's ridiculous. Yeah, 5-3 flying for 5. Huh. Yeah. <laughs> comes out so much quicker yep. than the other ones. You know, I don't like six and seven drops. Five drops are fine. That seems to be a a nice little sweet spot for like a deck with you know sixteen or seventeen lands to comfortably uh, curved into five. If you're up into the six mana, I mean, you're gonna be wanting to play at least seventeen, eighteen, and you're up into if you're up into like the seven and eight mana, you definitely want seventeen, eighteen lands and plus acceleration. Yeah. So and this guy, this, this guy can just perfect. fit in any old deck. Yeah, not quite a blood gift demon, like not quite good enough to be classified in that range of demons. But compared to the other pre-release packs, it's not even comparable. Like it's yeah. just better. So what's the paragon? Blood gift the demon. I think the blood gift demon just had a bad standard for it to to be in. Yeah, it was so close. Thinking that this to standard being it might be better. It was so close to being played. Uh, I would definitely play it in this standard. Uh, other black creatures you control get plus one plus one, and another black creature gets death touch to the turn. I think this card is just value on top of value. Yep. So I don't think it's any question. If you're in black, you're playing this guy. Um, Would have preferred that to be a zombie warrior just for tribal. What is it? Is but it a skeleton? Skeleton okay. warrior. Yeah, that's fair. But uh, zombies already have a dude that gives them all death touch. So. Yeah. I think. I know, but just, just, just you know, it's just. <laughs> More value. Yep, totally. Oh, well. Totally. Uh, Cruel Sadist. This is a this is a strange one. So you could pay a life, put a counter on it. Um, so as a one drop, you know, it, it's actually useful as a, a card that could become a, an aggressive card. But you don't want to sink too much life into it, or it just gets removed, right? But then it, it deals X damage to target creature. So, yeah, I I was going to compare it to uh, Chronomaton, but yeah. Mythic Spoiler already did that for me. Um, yeah, it's very similar to that. And then the added ability to remove counters to kill a creature is pretty cool. Yep. Yeah. I think it's uh, a card worth trying out. It's one of the ones that I'm going to try out early, see if it's any good, if it's too slow, or if it costs you too much life the, to play. The problem with this card, it's rare. And yeah. you'll be disappointed if you open this up in a pack for limited. I mean, it's strong and limited, but it's not that strong. No. And that's what set Kermat, the, the, and the, the Chrononym, Chronomaton, whatever the, that card's called, yeah. was colorless too, so it could fit in any deck. Exactly. This one is going to be more, um, of course, only black. 100%. So I don't think it will see standard play. It's not It's not nearly powerful enough to see standard play. Okay. So we have... Uh, okay, so we've got one one more interesting rare coming up. Uh, the Shadow Cloak Vampire, um, I think it's worth playing as like a 23rd yeah. pseudo yeah, evasion dude. Yeah, you have to play it. Um, I think... Dealing, dealing too life to yourself to do four damage is more than enough. Uh, flesh to dust, instant speed, destroy target creature. Uh, it basically doesn't matter what it costs; you just play it. Yep. Uh, I pick the six mana ones in uh, Journey of Nyx all the time. Yep. I high pick them. 
So I mean, you just you just take that guy. Uh, Covenant of Blood deals four damage to target player or player. What is to target creature or player, and you gain four life. So cost seven normally, but it's got Convoke. Um, I'm not sure that it's good enough to be played um, in in limited, but it, it might be. I might be completely way off on it. These these things can swing games. We've seen cards like this before. It feels kind of like Corrupt. Yeah. You know, Corrupt does have a higher potential. And it is common. I mean, it, I think these are fine. Yeah. Uh, it doesn't kill a Rot Feaster Maggot, though. So, uh, it actually does a lot of really cool stuff. So, when it enters the battlefield, you exile target creature or card from a graveyard, which could mean big things against another black deck. Then you gain life equal to that card's toughness. And it's just a 3 5 for 5. I think that's a, that's a pretty solid card at common. Yeah, it's not bad. Yeah, it just says. If uh, nothing else, again, this is, there's a lot of paying life. Yeah. And black that we've already seen, this could actually be the, the card that kind of makes up for that. Yeah, it gets it gets you back to life because there's no gray merchant in this in this format for black. Yep. Um so I'm gonna skip over Waste Not for a second and just look at Necromancer's assistant. Um when it exiles enter the battlefield, put the top three cards of your library into your graveyard. Um a three one for three is pretty decent, and if you're going the strategy where you need cards in your own graveyard, it, it might be worth playing. Um, but it just doesn't do quite the same thing as the, the green equivalent does for standard. Yeah. You compare this like Seder Wayfinder and yeah. it's it's a snooze, so Yeah. Alright, let's you need to do something else. Let's get to the juicy the juicy card. The card that you made, the card that the whole magic community contributed to um, on Facebook or whatever. And you know, I think I voted and every time it I voted the opposite direction. <laughs> So, like, and, and literally every one of them, it, they went against me. All right. So, waste not. Two mana for an enchantment. Whenever an opponent discards a creature card, put a 2-2 black zombie creature token on the battlefield. Untapped. Whenever an opponent discards a land card, add two black to your mana pool. And whenever an opponent discards a non-creature non-land card, draw a card. Do you see this actually being played in modern, like people say? Yes. In what? Like I do. A, like the rack deck, or? Yeah, the, the, yeah, it's a perfect card in in the rack deck. Uh, other than it's unnecessary in the rack deck, I think it just goes into a nice little value deck. You might you might see Blightning make a comeback. Ooh. As waste not and Blightning are are curved perfectly to, you you know cast a two waste not and then and cast Blightning and you get even more value out of Blightning because you're at least going to if you if they discard lands that just means you get to cast another spell. Yeah, exactly. So, and if they discard non-lands or non-creature lands, you get to draw more cards. Yep. And then lightning just is insane with this this card. I think. So this, so you you heard it here first. Lightning might be coming back because of waste not. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, this fits in a Jun kind of a Jun shell with Thoughtseize as well. Uh, Thoughtseize Inquisition. So you'd want to be playing both of them. Would you play and this then, over again, Bob be, in those decks? No, no, but but you still have room. A lot of people are so set on this quote unquote curve that they want a four drop and they're gonna throw in any four drop imaginable or three drop, you know, that uh ever since Blood Bloodbred Elf was uh banned. Yep. They've been trying to just jam something in that spot. I don't think you necessarily need to jam anything in that spot. This again, this could go and just a I think this justifies putting Blightning back in. Of course Blightning was so much better with the Blood Red Elf cascading into Blightning. Yeah. But, I mean, this this potentially can make up for, like, Blightning, you have no way to protect yourself after you kind of use it. You're doing three damage. You're making them discard two cards. But, I mean, they're, all these options are terrible in Modern. You get a 2-2 two, two Black... They, they discard a creature, you get a 2-2 two, two Black Zombie creature token. That's huge Yeah. in Modern, which is a, a big one-for-one one format. They discard a land. You get to cast more spells. You get to cast your possibly your Liliana yep, of the Veil for sure, um, or so just more thought like seasons or or whatever. Yeah, 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 yeah. Exactly. Or or, jeez, uh, uh, I'm thinking Frexian Obliterator at this point. Yep. You know you can set up a good, and then whenever an opponent discards a non-creature non-land, you draw a card. So, I mean, I I could definitely see a a really really heavy discard deck with maybe even mind rots and when waste not could just be sort of the finisher so it, it's gonna see play 
it's it, I think it's a very I mean it is subject to die to abrupt decay yep. uh, so it's it's not the most overpowered card ever but this card's huge in modern it, it really like there's no worse feeling playing a deck like Tron I mean Tron actually is pretty good at top decking that's what Tron has built but it, a lot of times they slow you to, when you're getting more value out of it like drawing more cards and or, or even even with waste not versus like UWR control where that wants to just stay ahead of you in card advantage. Yeah. If you resolve that waste knot, there's no way they're going to. Oh, you don't think so? Oh, so what about something like this in... I'm thinking more like outlandish now. In something like um, a group hug deck where you've got your cards that make both players draw cards to the point where they have to start discarding. And then you uh, you start getting value off of the discards. While at the same time having like the parity of card advantage from those from those other effects. Yeah, you could do that in a like a commander deck. Isn't the most popular commander deck the Mind Seize commander that uh, makes you draw and, and take damage? Yeah. Um. Yes, she doesn't make you take damage from drawing them. I think you just get the spells. So. No, no the Not the Mind Seize, one of the, the alternate uh, commander in Mind Seize, they you draw an additional card and whenever an opponent draws a card they lose a life oh that's gross that's why all the cards like Unreal Dreams and there were so many cards that just went through the roof on price mm -hmm. because of that Mind Seize Commander deck and I think that I mean if you're going kind of going that strategy where uh, again the, the cards like uh, Reforge the Soul yep. and Waste Not you mean you can oh jeez now my mind's spinning because now I want to <laughs> I want to throw this in my storm deck because that is just insanity if you make them discard. Oh, if you I could I could go off with that mana. You know? <laughs> That's right. You know, it's black mana. And then you have some zombies for kicks. Do with each player discarding their hand and drawing new cards. Yep. Or there's, I think there is a uh, yeah goblin game. Let me check that card. I think it's both players. So goblin game. Oh man, this might have to. Turn into a brew session. <laughs> now I'm thinking about this. I'll find it here. The each player draws burning inquiry. Each player draws three cards and discards three cards at random. Ooh, that's pretty. Spicy. One mana. Yeah. That I think waste not has a lot more potential when you start brewing it around cards like this. And I'm thinking that there's going to be more cards like Burning Inquiry. I know that there's some really overpowered one like Wheel of Fortune back in Legacy, and and whatnot. But what it, it, Reforged the Soul is a good example. Yep. And I think you can build an entire deck around it. Just making your opponent discard a, a the greatest amount of cards possible yeah. even if they're getting advantage i mean it, see easy burning inquiry is kind of weird because you're you're spending the initial investment to have card disadvantage they're drawing three cards and discarding three cards you're basically drawing three cards and discarding four cards yeah. with the the cost of burning inquiry so uh, but the randomness is kind of cool because it really hurts combo decks that are, the, especially people that are like, oh, I get to keep this really cool hand because it's got everything I need. Well, now they might not necessarily have everything they need. Yep. So cards like Burning Inquiry can really screw them up. So. Oh, yeah, you spend the first three turns trying to craft your hand to go off, and then all of a sudden it's gone, right? Yeah, so. yeah. So, I mean, I, I again, this I think that there's some merit to this deck with Burning Inquiry and reforge the soul and and there's got to be you can even put something like megram doesn't isn't megram whatever they discard a card they lose two life um maybe i'm not sure um yeah don't know they they compare the card to liliana's caress and primeval bounty and i, I immediately saw the primeval bounty comparison yeah megram says whenever an opponent discards a card megram deals two damage to that player sick yeah, Lilina's Crest, whenever an opponent discards a card, that player loses two life. So they basically do the same thing. Oh, actually, this And this you also have Quest of the Nile Stone. What does this one do? It's popping up. Whenever an opponent discards a card, you put a quest. At the end of each upkeep, if that player has no cards in hand, okay. You may have that player lose five life. So that one seems a little bit weaker for what we're doing. So I'm thinking that, that a deck with Liliana's Crest, Megrum, and Waste Not, 
And then cards like Burning Inquiry and maybe I, I'm sure there might be just a, a, an easier hard cast, uh, either through blue or red, um, that does a similar effect as Reforce the Soul. Uh, or anything that just there, there's got to be other cards that make them discard cards and draw there's cards. There's just there's just pure value. Whispering Madness, right? Uh, yep, that costs five though. I think. I think it's four. Is it? Um, yeah, and then you get just pure value things like Liliana of the Veil that you can just and, go in and, and that's cards. standard. Whispering Madness is standard right now. Yep. And when does the cipher occur after they just discard a card? Right, it is after. It is after, so they do it again. If or is get. it the same? Do, they, do you have a time to respond? Does they? What my question is: Does the zombie come into play? Because Whispering Madness, that's pretty powerful if you can actually hook it up to the zombie that you then. Oh. Um. um hmm. got. So. I thought I thought that the cipher occurred the after the spell had resolved. Yeah. Yeah, I, I'm thinking. So even in standard with Whispering Madness, I'm 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 starting to think that that waste not could have some, you know, definite. What is isn't there isn't there a counter spell and they discard a card too, or is that no the counter spell they mill right? Uh, there's a yep, yeah, it, it's mill, but there's like a destroy target creature and they. Discard cards, I think, but or no, that's mill too. And Rakdos Return still exists. So yeah, Whispering Nuts is four, and so yeah, you it resolves and then you cipher, I think. Yeah. Oh, uh, so so we have. Yeah, I guess even in modern, there's not. There's a suspend card with Wheel of Fate. Each player discards his or her hand and then draws seven cards, which it is suspend four and it's two to suspend it. So I don't know if that's quite playable in modern. It will come. It will. It will go off uh, probably, too late. Yeah. Other than you could cascade into it. Yeah, I think it's pro probably too late. But you wouldn't really want to cascade into it. It'd be too hard to really set up cascade. No. I'm still thinking Blightning and Reforge the Soul and Burning Inquiry would be the way to go yep. in a modern deck. And couple that with Megram and Liliana's Caress. And I think you actually have a pretty formidable formidable deck. Yeah, it's definitely something you could take to, to F&Ms. Yeah, and, and then there's inc Incendiary Command as well. But that's five mana, and they just replace the cards that they discarded. So each player discards all the cards in their hand, then draws that many cards. So not not too many. I mean, it's good with Liliana the Veil as well. Yep. I think there's a lot of ways you can use it in even the limited environment. So I'm pretty sure you could just play it. Although there might not be that. But it's like you'd have to play Black Cat with it. What would you play? If you got Waste Not Unlimited, you'd have to play Black Cat. You'd have to play Liliana. Yeah, Limited, it wasn't meant for Limited, of course. This is a player-made card. Yep. No one really keeps in mind Limited at that point. Um, yeah, there really isn't any. There's Mind Rot. Yeah, Mind Rot, Mind Black Rot. Cat, and Liliana. I think that's it yep. for Discard. Oh, um, the Demon also does it, but if you... Oh, no, Sacrifice the Creature. Yeah, never mind. I think that's it. Yep. So, I don't know. Waste not, probably not a first pick in limited, but cool constructed card. No. No, there's definitely not enough ways to... Even though one thing I have noticed is mine rots are, are very, very late. Yeah. And it does curve quite well. So. Yep. I don't know. Maybe if you get it, you can try it, but I would let it wheel. Yeah, unfortunately, it's going to be rare drafted. <laughs> totally. A lot of times. I mean, in a serious tournament, of course, you let it wheel. But if you're going to go that strategy, you probably will have to first pick it. I think it's pre-selling at $8. Oh, wow. Which is pretty high for a rare. That's crazy. All right, well. But we'll... I definitely got my uh, gears turning <laughs> now. With the, uh, different. I mean, every initially, I think everyone was looking at it with the Thoughtseize angle. I mean, I'll probably use Thoughtseize in the deck. Of course. But when you, you couple it with, like, uh, Reforge the Soul, and I'm thinking about like a Pass in Flames, uh, Reforge the Soul type deck with Waste Not, yep. kind of being your Pyromancer's Ascension. I, I'm thinking that. 
I mean, you can even expect this to ramp. Like, Inquisition and Thoughtseize can actually force them to discard. Well, I guess it's an on-land card. So you'd have to get an on-land that way. But I wonder if there's a, a specific way to make them discard land cards? Yeah. There are some ways where you can let them choose and they can discard yeah, land yeah. cards. Their yeah, yeah. There's just cards like Raven's Crime. Yeah. They seem pretty good with this. Maybe even like, there you go, a Raven's Climb Life of the Loam type deck as this would give you ways to actually uh, generate excess mana with a double black to actually cast another Raven's Crime and the Colorless for the Life from the Loam. Yep. And so you can actually get off some pretty significant uh, discard with that combo. So that's another angle you can take it from. It's just I think that there was a deck like that back in the day using utilizing Life from the Loam and the uh, Smallpox. So Smallpox might work very well with Waste Knot yep. as well. That's fair. Cool. Well, we better... I mean, you can, again, if they discard a land card, then that turn you might be able just to empty their hand on that turn. Yep. That uh, that might just happen because you could just combo off with more mana and you just continue making them discard things, right? So could work. It looks like you've got a storm of brewing in your mind. Yeah. So we might, <laughs> we might have to cut it here and let you do some brewing <laughs> and then come back tomorrow with some different shirts and do uh, do the red review. Sounds good. Wicked. All right, folks. Uh, those of you that stayed to the full 52 minutes and 30-some seconds, um, thank you for watching. We'll see you next time with Red. Bye-bye.